Hello guys, this is Justin Bibeled and welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, It's Organic. Ilalaban kahit kanino, oo, simple lang ako at malabo mong magdipuhan Kaya okay nang kahit sa FB mo lang mapusuan kasi Di na mapigilan ng sariling mapaibig sa iyo Ano ba to? Gusto ka? So last time, we named compounds. So given the structure, we named the compounds according to the IOPAC nomenclature system. So from this point, how about we're going to reverse it? Like given the name, then we are asked to did, uh, write or draw the structural formula of the compound. So for example, number one, draw the structural formula for one bromo for methyl hexane so how do we do that <coughs> first is you are going to to determine first the parent compound the parent is hexane so you would expect that it has a six carbon okay so remember that these six carbon are actually bonded to each other which is which contains a carbon to carbon single bond only so one two three four five six okay after that, your substituent. So in your carbon number one, so if this is your carbon number one, it has actually a bromo that is attached. Remember that your carbon <coughs> would have a total of how many bonds? Four bonds. So your carbon number one, there is a bromine there that is actually attached. That's why it's it's one bromo. Okay, so you can you can <coughs> put the BR here or there so depending on you as long as it is actually located on the carbon number one then you have also four methyl <coughs> okay so it is actually located on carbon number four so one two three and four so in carbon number four there is a methyl there okay so there is a methyl there okay so now you can go directly to your hydrogens because you already set you are your your substituents are already satisfied here on this structure. Okay? Carbon number one that is one bromo, then four um, methyl hexane. Okay, so you cannot put your hydrogen. Okay, you cannot put that hydrogen there. This one also, how many hydrogens? There are two, so that. You can have a total of four bonds for that carbon. This one also would have two hydrogens for a total of four bonds. <coughs> and this one also. And this one. And the last carbon would have three hydrogens, so that there it would have a total of uh, four bonds. Okay, so this is now the structural formula for one bromo for methyl hexane. So you can either write this on its condensed. So you already know how to write the condensed formula. We write you you just slice the compound. Okay, then you will have. Uh, and then you can write the condensed, okay? Or you can also write the line formula for this compound. So it depends on you, okay? So that's it. That's very easy. Okay, next. 2,2-dibromo-3-ethylexane. Okay? So the same, you should get first the parent, which is actually exchange, so that is carbon to carbon, a single bond. Okay, carbon to carbon, single bond. So there are six. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, and six. <coughs> so in carbon number two, there are actually two bromos. That's why it is two to dibromo. So the carbon number two, that is two to dibromo. Okay, carbon number two, there are two bromos. In carbon number three, there is an ethyl attached. So what's the formula for ethyl? 
that is actually C H two. Okay, C H two, C H three. Remember on your alkyl group, your ethyl, the C H two is the one that will attach, not the C H three. Okay, the C H two will attach to your parent compound, not the C H three. Okay, so three has an ethyl. Then you're done with the substituent. Then you can write down already your hydrogens. Okay, so carbon number one would have three hydrogens. Three hydrogens. Okay, carbon number four. A uh, three. <coughs> you have carbon number four has two hydrogens. Okay, have two hydrogens. Then you have carbon number five would have also two hydrogens. And the last one, carbon, carbon number six, would have six hydrogens. Oh, six hydrogens? Three hydrogens, I mean. <laughs> Sorry for that. Okay, then you're done. This is now the structural formula for 2,2-dibromo-3-ethylexane. So you can either write it also, you can convert this into condensed, then you can also convert the condensed into a line formula. Okay? Okay, let's move on to constitutional or structural isomerism. So what are this isomerism? Or what are what is constitutional or structural isomerism? So structural isomerism or constitutional isomerism, these are actually uh, these are actually compounds that have same molecular formula but different on the arrangement of atoms. Okay, so you know how to get the molecular formula. You just you just have to combine all the carbons. So you just uh, determine how many carbons are there, then determine how many numbers of hydrogen for that specific hydrocarbon. Okay? So, for example, butane, which is a formula for C4H10. Your butane, you can write it like this, the condensed formula. This is actually the normal butane. But also, you would have this uh, formula for that compound. Okay? So, you notice they have the same molecular formula. You have C, 4 carbon, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? The same carbon, the same number of carbon, and also the same number of hydrogen. You have 3, 5, 7, and 10. This one also has actually the same number of carbon. And you notice that it has also the same number of hydrogen. Then therefore, both of these two is what we call an isomer to each other. Okay, but they are actually different a molecule or they are different compound. This one is different from this. Okay? Since and also their physical and chemical properties. This one is different also on its boiling point and melting point. It has also a slight difference from this boiling point of this and also its melting point. Okay? But you notice that they have the same molecular formula but only their arrangement of atoms are actually different. So therefore, how do you transform this one to that? You can actually get your CH3 and you can also bond it to the carbon number 2. <coughs> In that case, you are actually, so if this carbon here is actually attached to that, then it will lead to this. Okay? However, you will get this one hydrogen and you will Put it there. Okay? Because you are already attaching another carbon. So if you will not get the hydrogen there, your carbon here would have a total of five bonds. Okay? So you should expect that you will get one carbon, one hydrogen there. And of course, if this will left with, with that formula of CH2, then it would have it wouldn't have a total of carbon, a total of four bonds. It would only have a three bonds, like two of the hydrogen and the other one is for the carbon. Okay, so that if you will put the, the the hydrogen that is from here to there, 
then it would have a total of uh, four bonds already that become CH3. Then you remove the H there that becomes CH and you attach the CH3 there. So in order to get this uh, uh, formula of the compound. And this one is actually different. Okay, you can name this. Okay, using a UPAC name. So this is your normal butane. That is actually the normal butane. Okay, well this one is different. Okay, so how, what is the name of this? So UPAC naming, one, two, three. That is propane is the parent. Carbon number two contains your methyl. So therefore, this is two methyl propane. That is correct. That is two methyl propane. Okay, both butane and two methyl propane are structural isomer to each other because they have the same molecular formula but actually they have different arrangement of atoms okay so that is just uh, an example of that okay so how about it's your next uh, your next uh, uh, that this will be your time to do this okay so you can pause this video and you draw all the possible isomers for FCA, C6H14. Okay, so you draw the <coughs> all the possible isomers and convince yourself that these are all actually the possible isomers for FCA. So it should have a total of six carbon and fourteen hydrogens. So the answers would lead you to these structures. Okay, so the first isomer is our normal hexane. We have six straight chain of carbon. So this is actually the condensed formula for all of that. Huh? So one, two, three, four, five, six, and you have 14 hydrogen. Okay, how about, so the next <coughs> uh, isomer, how about if we're going to transfer this CH3 there? So, what happened to that? This would lead this to that formula. Okay? So, your carbon number 2 would have an attachment of CH3. Okay? How about if this carbon, we will put that on carbon number 3. Okay? If we will put that on carbon number 3, then it will lead to that formula okay how about if we're going to put that on carbon number four what happened it will lead to the same structure as this okay it will lead to that structure why it's because if you are okay so if you're going to attach this to that carbon number four actually that carbon number four is not a carbon number four okay because remember that you are going to 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 uh, to number your parent in such a way that your substituent would attain the lowest number so if you're going to attach your substituent there then this would become your carbon number one and this would now be your carbon number two so it would have been the same structure as this you have one, two, three, four, and five. That becomes one, two, three, four, and five. Okay? So it will lead to that structure. Okay, that would have been the same. Okay, so so that's it. Okay. How about if we will attach here the CH3 and we will also attach another CH3? So these two carbons we're going to attach there. That is okay. You will lead to that formula. Okay? How about if we're going to attach here and if we're going to attach there? Okay, that two carbon, you will lead to that formula. Okay? <coughs> so there are actually no other isomers aside from these five isomers here. Okay, this is actually the possible, all the possible isomers for hexane. So if you draw something that that is actually, uh, uh, you think that it is correct, you're actually leading to these uh, four isomers here. This one, that one, this one, and that one. Okay, could have been uh, twisted a little bit, but you, if you're going to name that 
compound that you are that you draw and you name this compound here you should have to get the same name of that compound okay so what do you, would you expect to have <coughs> the name of this compound okay what would be the name you have one two three four five parent name is pentane okay and your carbon number two there's an attach of methyl so therefore this would be two methyl pentane correct okay how about this Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, carbon number 3, there is a methyl that is 3-methylpentane. Okay, how about this one? A longest continuous carbon chain, 1, 2, 3, 4, that is butane. Carbon number 2 has 2-methyl, so 2,2-dimethylbutane. Correct. How about this one? Okay. Longest continuous carbon chain, 1, 2, 3, 4, that is butane. Carbon number 2 has methyl. Carbon number 3 has also methyl. So therefore, the name would be 2, 3, dimethyl butane. Okay, so those were the names of this uh, possible isomers for hexane.